Imagine you are standing by the fence of your ranch looking at your cattle. The sun is setting, and instead of feeling peace, you feel a knot in your stomach because you know the numbers do not add up. Every time you buy a sack of commercial feed or a load of soy, you feel like you are bleeding money. You look at your animals and you wonder how long you can keep this up before the profit margins disappear completely. This is the silent nightmare of thousands of producers. But what if I told you that there is a white powder sitting on the shelves of agricultural supply stores right now that costs a fraction of what you are paying for protein and could slash your feeding bills by 30% or even more? However, I have to warn you right now, this is not a game. This substance is like dynamite. Used correctly, it can blast through your obstacles and build a profitable empire. But if you make one single mistake, if you ignore the specific rules I am about to teach you, it can kill your best animals in less than an hour. I have seen grown men cry over dead bulls because they tried to take a shortcut without understanding the science. Do not let that be you. Today, I am going to reveal the urea supplement trick that the big feed companies do not want you to master. Because once you understand this, you will never look at a feed bill the same way again. Stay with me, because in a few minutes I will give you the exact antidote you must have in your pocket in case something goes wrong, a secret that could save the life of your entire herd. Let us start by understanding why you are currently losing money. Most cattle farmers think they are feeding cows. That is the first mistake. You are not feeding the cow. You are feeding the billions of microscopic bacteria and protozoa living inside the cow's first stomach, the rumen. Think of the rumen as a massive fermentation factory. These tiny workers are the ones that actually digest the grass and the grain. They break it down and, in the process, they reproduce. Here is the magic part. When those bacteria die, they pass into the rest of the digestive system and they become the highest quality protein source for your cattle. We call this microbial protein. Now to grow and multiply these bacteria need two things. They need energy, which comes from carbohydrates like grass, corn, or molasses, and they need nitrogen to build their own bodies. Usually, you provide this nitrogen by buying expensive soy meal, alfalfa, or cotton cake. These are natural protein sources. But here is the secret. The bacteria do not care if the nitrogen comes from a fancy expensive soy plant or from a simple chemical compound. They just need the nitrogen. This is where urea comes in. Urea is what we call non-protein nitrogen. It is pure nitrogen packed into a tiny white crystal. When it hits the liquid in the rumen, it dissolves instantly and releases ammonia. The bacteria grab this ammonia and combine it with the energy from the feed to build their own protein bodies. It is essentially alchemy. You are turning a cheap fertilizer ingredient into prime beef or milk. The cost difference is astronomical. A pound of nitrogen from urea costs significantly less than a pound of nitrogen from soy. When you do the math across a herd of 50 or 100 animals, the savings are not just pennies, they are thousands of dollars a year. But wait, because here is where most people fail. You cannot just throw urea into a trough and hope for the best. If you do that, you will have dead cows before lunch. The problem is the speed. Urea releases ammonia extremely fast. It is like a flash flood. If the bacteria have enough energy available right at that moment, they can catch that ammonia and use it. But if there is no energy, if the cow is just eating dry straw with no fermentable carbohydrates, the ammonia overflows. It floods the rumen, it enters the bloodstream, and it travels to the brain. This leads to ammonia toxicity. The animal starts trembling, it foams at the mouth, it cannot stand up, and eventually its respiratory system collapses. It is a horrible way to die, and it is entirely preventable. So how do we harness this power safely? It is all about the balance and the adaptation. You have to engineer the diet so that the energy release matches the ammonia release. Think of it like mixing fuel and air in an engine. If you have too much fuel and no air, the engine floods. You need a carrier that provides quick energy. Molasses is the best friend of urea. Corn is also excellent. When you mix urea with molasses, the cow licks it up. 
the molasses provides the instant sugar burst the bacteria need to grab the ammonia from the urea. They lock it together and boom, you have created protein out of thin air. Before I give you the exact recipe and the adaptation protocol that allows you to use this safely, I want to ask you something. Have you ever felt like the industry is keeping technical secrets from you just to sell you more bagged products? It happens all the time. They sell you protein blocks that are essentially just molasses and urea with a fancy label and a 400% markup. We are here to break that cycle. If you are finding this information eye-opening and you want to stop burning cash and start building a legacy of smart, efficient ranching, I invite you to subscribe to our channel Biggest Bulls and Cow right now. We do not just talk about cows, we talk about the business of beef and the science of success. Join our community of intelligent producers who are tired of doing things the old way. Hit that subscribe button and let us continue. Now, let us get into the practical application. This is the part you need to write down. You cannot introduce urea to a herd overnight. The bacteria in the rumen are not ready for it. They are like a specialized workforce. If you have been feeding them only dry grass, you have a workforce trained to eat dry grass. If you suddenly dump a load of pure nitrogen on them, they will get overwhelmed. You have to train them. We call this the adaptation period. This process takes at least two to three weeks. Do not rush this. In the first week, you are going to use a very low concentration. If you are mixing a supplement lick, you might start with just 2% urea in the mix. This allows the population of urea utilizing bacteria to slowly multiply. By the second week, as the bacteria population grows, you can step it up to 4%. By the third week, you can reach your target level, which might be 6 or even 10%, depending on your specific formulation and the size of your cattle. Here is a golden rule that has saved my farm more times than I can count. Never feed urea to hungry cattle. Let me repeat that because it is critical. Never feed urea to hungry cattle. If an animal comes to the trough with an empty stomach, it will gorge itself. It will eat too much too fast. The ammonia will spike and you will have a crisis. You must ensure that your cattle have filled up on fiber, on grass or hay before they get access to the urea supplement. The urea is the dessert, not the main course. It is the catalyst that helps them digest the cheap dry grass better. Actually, that is another secret benefit. Urea does not just provide protein, it actually supercharges the digestion of low-quality forage. In the dry season, when the grass is yellow and tough like wire, it is low in protein. The bacteria cannot break it down, so the cow eats less because her stomach stays full of undigested fiber. When you introduce small amounts of urea, the bacteria population explodes. They attack that dry fiber with renewed aggression. The cow digests the dry grass 30% faster. This means she can eat more grass, so not only are you saving money on protein supplements, but you are also getting more value out of the free dry grass standing in your pasture. The animal maintains weight, or even gains weight, while your neighbor's cows are turning into skeletons. Let us talk about the mixing. You must be precise. If you are making a lick block or a loose mineral mix with urea, you need a mechanical mixer or a shovel and a lot of patience. You cannot have hot spots. Imagine if you mix 100 pounds of salt and minerals with 10 pounds of urea, but you do not mix it well. One cow might come along and lick a clump that is pure urea. That cow is dead. The mixture must be uniform. A great tip is to dissolve the urea in a little bit of water or molasses before mixing it into the dry ingredients. This ensures that every single grain of feed carries a safe tiny dose of urea rather than having dangerous nuggets hidden in the trough. Another critical factor is water. Urea requires water to be metabolized. If your cattle do not have access to clean, abundant water, do not use urea. The chemistry simply will not work and the risk of toxicity skyrockets. Dehydrated cattle are much more susceptible to poisoning. So check your troughs. Make sure the float valves are working. Clean water is the cheapest nutrient you have and it is the safety net for your urea program. Now I promised you the antidote. Even the best managers can have an accident. 
Maybe a fence breaks and the cows get into the shed where the pure urea bag is open. Maybe an employee mixes the ratio wrong. If you see a cow showing the signs, twitching ears, staggering, bloating, you have minutes to act. The ammonia is basic, it is alkaline. To neutralize it, you need an acid. The most accessible acid is vinegar, ordinary white vinegar that you have in your kitchen. You need to administer vinegar orally. A gallon of vinegar followed by cold water can drop the rumen pH and trap the ammonia, stopping it from entering the blood. It cools down the reaction. Every cattleman using urea should have five gallons of vinegar stored in the barn, clearly marked emergency only. It is a cheap insurance policy that works. Knowing this gives you the confidence to use this powerful tool without fear. Let us address the specific ratios for different types of cattle. For growing calves, their rumen is still developing. You need to be very careful. Usually, natural protein is better for very young calves, but for yearlings and adult cows, urea is fantastic. A common safe limit is that urea should provide no more than one-third of the total protein in the diet. Or, looking at it another way, it should not exceed 1% of the total dry matter intake. If you are mixing it into a concentrate ration, keeping it around 3% of the grain mix is a standard safety zone for adapted animals. There is also a myth that urea causes infertility. This is false. Infertility is caused by a lack of nutrition, by cows losing body condition. Because urea helps cows maintain body condition during the dry season cheaply, it actually helps fertility. A cow that is not starving will cycle. A cow that is utilizing dry forage efficiently because of the urea boost will get pregnant. The danger is only in the mismanagement, not in the substance itself. You might be wondering about the rain. This is a practical detail that ruins many plans. If you put out a trough of urea and molasses mix and it rains, the water collects in the trough. The urea dissolves into this rainwater. The cows come and drink this sweet water, which is now a concentrated poison solution. You must use covered troughs. You must have drainage holes in your mineral feeders so water cannot accumulate. If you see water standing in a urea trough, dump it out immediately. Do not take the risk. This sounds like a lot of work, but compared to the cost of soy, it is a minor management adjustment that pays for itself 10 times over. Think about the economics for a second. Let us say you have 50 cows. In the dry season, they lose weight. To stop that, you might buy two tons of commercial cake. That is thousands of dollars. Or you buy a few bags of mineral salt, a drum of molasses, and a bag of urea. You mix your own supplement. The cost is perhaps 30% of the commercial option. The cows come out of winter in good condition. They breed back sooner. Your weaning wheats next year are higher because the mothers had milk. This is how you engineer profit. This is how you survive when beef prices are low. You cut the fat from your expenses without starving your herd. We have covered the biology, the economics, the risks, and the safety protocols, but the most important thing is your mindset. Many people hear urea is toxic and they shut down. They let fear dictate their business. Successful ranchers let knowledge dictate their business. They respect the risk, but they manage it. They use the tools available to them. I want you to try this. Do not bet the whole farm tomorrow. Start with a small group of animals. Maybe your call cows or a group of steers. Buy one bag of feed grade urea. Get some molasses. Follow the adaptation protocol I described. Start with low doses. Watch them. Look at their manure. You will see the manure change from dry hard balls to softer patties, which indicates better digestion. Look at their coats. They will get shinier. And then look at your checkbook. When you see the results on that small group, you will realize that you have been overpaying for feed for years. This is the kind of practical, no-nonsense agronomy we believe in. It is not about buying the most expensive gear. It is about using your brain. It is about understanding the physiology of the animal and using chemistry to your advantage. We are building a community of smart, aggressive learners here. If you have used urea before, I want you to go to the comments right now. Tell us your ratio. Tell us your experience. Did you have a scare? 
Did you save a fortune? Your experience helps the new guy who is nervous to try it. Let us help each other grow. And if you are new to this, ask your questions. There is no stupid question when we are dealing with livestock safety. Remember, the difference between a hobby farmer and a profitable cattle producer is often just knowledge and the courage to apply it. You now have the knowledge about the urea trick. The question is, do you have the discipline to apply it correctly? We are here to support you on that journey. We want to see your herd thriving and your bank account growing. We want you to be the most successful rancher in your district. So make sure you are part of our tribe. Click that subscribe button for Biggest Bulls and Cow. Share this video with your neighbor, even if he's stubborn, because this information helps the whole industry. Thank you for watching, thank you for caring about your animals, and as always, keep learning, keep improving, and I will see you in the next video with more strategies to maximize your production. Goodbye for now.